Hi, welcome to Microsoft Build 2017. If you're thinking about building or currently building a .NET application running in a microservices environment or inside of containers, you might be wondering how you can quickly find and fix issues that happen in this new environment. So I'm here to show you how you can use some of the new features that we've just released today for Application Insights so that you can get that same intelligent app-centric point of view um, with these new .NET microservices and containers. And again, my name is Dan Taylor, and I'm a senior program manager on the Visual Studio team. So first, I'm going to talk about the overall approach to monitoring and diagnostics that you can think about as you're building these containerized applications and microservices. And I'm going to show you two examples, one with a service fabric application, and a second one with a Docker application running in Kubernetes in Azure Container Service. So first, let's talk about the overall approach to monitoring and diagnostics with microservices and containers. So what are the challenges with microservices? So the key problem is that one logical request in a microservice can span multiple services, each one logging to different places. And so this makes the application very complex. You can see in this example here, um, I show that one customer facing request can call A, B, C, and D services, and then D might throw an error, which will return uh, an overall error back to the customer. And so it's really important to have an understanding of the service as a whole when running in this environment. And there's also a fan out problem. Even though 95 your services may be successful 95% of the time, even if uh, each one of your services only fails 5% of the time, if one call is, if one customer facing request calls 10 different services, um, if you sort of do the math here, this can end up with a 60% reliability to your customer facing request. And the other challenge is the use of non HTTP based communication protocols like queues or named pipes or other messaging systems. Because in non HTTP communication protocols, we don't have those standard semantics of request response that most of our tools typically rely on to give you good insight into your production application. <clears throat> so, how do we tackle this? Well, so on the left-hand side, I've got my three services, each with multiple instances. And what we do is we log all of those services to app the same application insights resource, but we include information um, about the cluster that they're running in. And I'll talk about how you get that information with some of our new SDKs in a moment. And we can also log information uh, from the host, like CPU, memory, or other metrics, as well as system logs to that same application insights resource. And then we can take that all all that information and give you one app-centric and intelligent view about your application so you can quickly spot which layers are healthy and where you might want to look at uh, to diagnose issues. And we also provide this very correlated uh, view across your services so you can trace back to application failures. So how do you get this awesome new stuff? Well, today we've announced uh, the release of our new Application Insights SDKs. So you can simply install the 2.4 SDK for .NET Full Framework applications or the 2.1 SDK for ASP.NET Core applications. And then you add the NuGet package that's specific to the cluster you're running on. So today we've also released the application insights.service fabric NuGet package and the application insights.kubernetes NuGet package that you can use. And that'll add that cluster specific uh, or orchestrator specific information. And then to get this nice app centric view, you can go to the new previews feature of application insights and then uh, enable the multi role application map preview. Uh, which will allow you to see that, that all up view. And if you're using non HTTP communication protocols, you need to add some instrumentation into your application that define operations. Now, in an uh, ASP.NET world or an HTTP world, an operation is uh, an ASP.NET request. So it's got a duration um, and it's got a timestamp and it can succeed or fail. So what you can do is you can add instrumentation into your application to define those same semantics even when you're dealing with things coming up, queues or, or other situations. So think about the situation where I'm taking work off of a queue. Um, when, I, when I put the work onto a queue, that's kind of like making a call to a second service. And then when that second service takes work off of a queue, it can say, hey, I'm doing work. I'm uh, going to process a loan or I'm going to uh, process this image. And you can, you can say how long that operation took and whether it succeeded or failed. And then it's also important to pass a correlation ID from a client to a server. So for example, if you're using a service bus or event hubs, you can pass that correlation ID uh, through headers that are available in those technologies. Um, but in other places like Azure storage queues or service fabric service remoting, 
you may have to pass uh, the correlation ID as, as part of, the, uh, as part of the, the function call itself in the case of service remoting, or in the Azure queue, you would pass it in the, uh, the queue payload. Now, it's important to remember that these are only required when you're using non-HTTP-based communication, because with the latest SDKs, we automatically include all of this information when you're using uh, HTTP server-to-server -server calls. Okay, great, so let's dive right into a Service Fabric application, and I'll give you a tour of how this works. So here I've got the Service Fabric One app. So let's go to the home page here. This, uh, this is the One app, and this is basically Hello World for Service Fabric. Now, if you're not familiar with Service Fabric, uh, it's, it's a, a full application programming model that you can use to build uh, microservice applications that are um, highly scalable, think hyperscale, uh, fault tolerant, and reliable. And there's a number of different service types. So this application includes the popular ones. So first, this page we're on is hosting this web service. And it also lets me go to a stateless backend service or a stateful backend service. And I can also use an actor pattern, or I can just run a guest executable here. So if I click through these, um, it allows me to just basically uh, play around with the, the elements of each of these uh, service types. So as I'm clicking get count here, it's, uh, it's returning a count from a stateless backend service. So this is a cross-server call from my web service to my backend. And you'll notice that each time I click the get count button, um, sometimes this, re this request fails with this 404 here. Uh, but most of the time it succeeds. And I can also look at my stateful service and my actor service here. But fo focusing in on this stateless backend service, let's go take a look at this application uh, in Application Insights. Oops, just got to reload the portal here. All right, so Application Insights is loading up here. So this is going to show us the overview here in a minute. All right, now that I'm on the overview, I'm going to click right into the application map. So as a developer, I like to look at this application map because it, it's how I think about my application or how I would draw it on a whiteboard with boxes and arrows. So at the top is that, that Service Fabric web service, if I hover over the tooltip there. And then I can see these arrows showing me all the different services that it calls. So if I click on this, I actually get a breakdown of uh, the sort of web service and its calls to the stateful backend service or this uh, stateless backend service and the other ones here. I also, on the right-hand side, I get a list of all the errors bucketized by you know, the top offenders here, and I can click in and get more information. So let's go ahead and look at that stateless backend service. And we can see this invalid operation exception. So that was the error that we were seeing. And uh, someone has thrown an exception and said, not happy with this particular number. OK. So let's take a look at the properties that are logged on this exception. So when I click on that, I can see all of the information that was added by that Service Fabric NuGet package. So if I scroll down here, I can see the Service Fabric specific properties, like the application type name um, here, which is the getting started application type. I can see the service type name, which is the stateless backend service. And uh, something really cool here that I'll point out, it also has this operation ID. So this operation ID is a unique identifier that I can use that, that traces the entire operation end to end from the web service to the back end. So I can use this information to actually look up all of the events that are associated with that particular call. So let me just copy that. I'm going to go into the Application Insights search. So if I paste that operation ID in, it's going to show us a bunch of events related to that one particular operation. So bam, there it is. So this actually hits the analytics backend and makes a query on that operation ID. Now something really cool to point out is that um, this is showing me both the front end and the back end. So I can see that from this uh, get async call to the front end service, I see this trace that says, hey, I'm in the web service layer. That's that top box about to call the back end. I can see the call to the back end from the front end. And then in the back end, I see the incoming request, a trace that says, hey, I'm now in the back end service getting the count. And then I can see the exception thrown in the back end where it says, I'm not happy with this number. And then another exception is then thrown in the front end saying one or more errors occurs, has occurred. So this is powered by the Application Insights Analytics Engine. And what's really cool is that this thing is highly scalable. So I could have terabytes and terabytes of data in this analytics back end. And this query here would be able to pull that needle out of the haystack for just this one operation, and it would tell me exactly what happened um, and very fast. So, okay, that's a quick tour of the Application Insights experience. Now let's go look at, at the, uh, the one app we have here in, in Visual Studio.
So I can see all those services that I have in Visual Studio, as well as the, uh, the, the various controllers. So if I look at this stateless backend service here, I'll look at the controller in the web service layer. And here's where I'm making um, that call to the backend. So one thing I'll point out is that this service fabric, uh, this one application, we're actually published this to GitHub as an example of how you can instrument your application with application insights. And this is an example of non-HTTP based communication. We're making a service remoting call. So we've written this helper class called activities.service remoting dependency async call that basically handles the passing of the correlation ID and, and various and filling out common properties that you would make use to make this look like a request. And this will be available for you to, to use in your own service fabric applications if you check us out on our GitHub page. So here I'm, I'm getting the current ID and I'm passing it to the back end. And this is where I'm making that get count async call. And then on the back end, let's take a look at this back end service here. When I get that call on the back end, it says, hey, I'm in the back end service getting the count. And then, oh, looks like if the number is divisible by five, I'm not happy with this number and I throw an exception. And so on, this, on the other end here, you'll notice that I take the correlation ID context here and then I use that and I reset it in the back end so that anything inside of this method here gets logged as this get count async operation. And because I'm using this helper method that we've provided, um, simply because I throw this exception, this exception is correlated with the activity that happened on the front end and I get that nice end to end view. Okay. That was a quick tour of a service fabric application. Now let's take a look at what this looks like with a Docker application running on Kubernetes in Azure ACS. I'm gonna go back to my web browser here and I'm gonna look at uh, my Kubernetes dashboard. Now this Kubernetes dashboard is showing me a cluster that's running an Azure container service. And I'm gonna look at my, my pods here. I'm gonna pick uh, this pod here that my teammate Sara set up for me. And you'll notice that this runs two containers. It's got a web API and a web backend. Now, before I go further, I want to point out something that I think is just super cool. Um, I, I'm actually running this, this browser here from my uh, Bash uh, shell in Windows. And I can see here, I can run the uh, Azure ACS list. And that's talking, and it shows me that these are my Kubernetes cluster here. Uh, and then I can run the kube control proxy service that allows me to view my, my Kubernetes cluster. So here I'm working with Linux, uh, clusters uh, using Linux on Windows, and that's just something cool that I wanted to share with you because I like it. So, okay, let's take a look at what this app does. Uh, it's a very simple application here, and all it does is it just, um, it's a .NET Core application running in Linux that just prints out various information about the Kubernetes cluster that it's running on, and then it goes and makes some calls to visualstudio.com and bing.com. So, um, Let's go ahead and look at what this looks like with Application Insights. Oh, gotta reload that again. So I'm gonna go into my, I've got my Kubernetes cluster here and I'm gonna go into my Application Insights resource where I've got the front end and the back end both sending their information. I'm gonna click on the application map and what we're gonna see is that same application map we saw with Service Fabric loaded up here. Okay, so there I can see that web front end and that web API back end, and I see some failures here. You also notice I've got my, uh, my HTML client reporting data to this application insights resource. So I can see the flow of information from the front end to the back end. Uh, and also I can see the outgoing HTTP calls here to bing.com, microsoft.com, uh, and those other places. Okay, so let's take a look at that exception on the back end. Okay, so this one looks like we're throwing an exception uh, every one out of 10 times so that we can show this to you in this cool demo. But let's take a look again at those properties. So if I look at the properties here, I've got the, uh, the various information from the Kubernetes orchestrator, basically anything that I would need to uniquely identify uh, the node that this is running on in the cluster. So I've got the pod name, the replica set ID, the container ID, the deployment ID, um, and then also, just like we saw before, I've also got that operation ID. So this is that same correlation ID that will help me trace this request from front end to back end. Let's go here into the search, paste that in, 
and we'll get that same cross server tracing from front end to back end. So let's, let's do a replay here of what happened. So a request came in, this made a call out to the back end, it traced some information. There's the incoming request into the back end, and we can see the various dependency calls that were happening and that exception that was thrown. That was uh, the one in 10 chance of happening. Okay, let's flip over to Visual Studio and look what this looks like in Visual Studio. So here with this application, I've got my web app and my back end. I can come in and I can go to Application Insights Configure. So all I've done is configured this with Application Insights uh, as I would normally do. And it sends to that Kubernetes microservice. So both the front end and back end are sending to that same uh, Kubernetes microservice resource. And let's go ahead and take a look at some of the packages that we have installed here. So if I look at the NuGet packages, you'll see that I've got that Microsoft Application Insights.Kubernetes package installed. Uh, currently on my demo box, I have a pre-release version, but you can try out the, uh, the public release today. And if I go into my startup.cs, you'll see that um, all I had to do is add the services.enable uh, Kubernetes call here, and that's what gave me um, that information about the Kubernetes orchestrator that helped it split out those nodes onto the map for me. Okay, so that was a very quick tour of some of the new capabilities that we've added to Application Insights that makes it easier for you to do microservices development and really uh, get a good monitoring and diagnostics experience. If you want to learn more, go to these links on the screen here for, um, for Service Fabric. Go to aka.ms slash AI Service Fabric, and that'll take you to our GitHub repo and other information about our current Service Fabric experience. And for more information about Kubernetes, go to aka.ms slash AI Kubernetes. All right, that was a quick tour. Thank you for tuning in today, and I uh, hope you uh, enjoy monitoring and doing diagnostics with .NET.